Uh, during the 1948 uh, uh, war, many of the Arabs who lived here left the country as uh, refugees, and this is what is called until today the refugee problem. Many of them just returned to the countries where they came from, Syria, Syria, Lebanon, Jordan, you know it. Um, but the local authorities prevented them from going back to their villages, to the towns, because they wanted them to go back to Israel in order to undermine the Jewish majority in this country. And they were kept, no, they are still kept in refugee camps 63 years after 1948. There is nowhere in the world where people are being kept in refugee camps 63 years. Only here in the Middle East and only with the Palestinian refugees, which originally uh, uh, not all of them are Palestinians. And in Lebanon it's even more because during the 50s uh, the Lebanese system was very shaky and there were many domestic problems in Lebanon. So many Lebanese moved to live inside the Palestinian refugee camps because uh, UNRWA, the United Nations uh, uh, Relief and Work Agency, gave them food for free. So many Lebanese moved to live inside the 10 uh, Palestinian refugee camps inside Lebanon. So they are, they, are, they are not even one day in this country. But they are viewed today as Palestinian refugees and they are on the payroll of, the, of UNRWA, which has totally different uh, criteria than any other agency in the world, how to consider what, what is a, a refugee. And uh, ever since then, what is called Palestinians are divided between four places in the world. One is inside Israel, and as you might know, tw like 20% of, uh, of the people in Israel are Arabs. Mostly define themselves as Palestinians. Another part are in, in Gaza, in, uh, in the West Bank, in Judea and Samaria, in refugee camps. Third part are in the close exile, like in Lebanon, Syria, and Jordan. And another part are all of the world, all claim their right to return to this country, in spite of the fact that most of them were not born, were not born here, but they are descendants of people who lived here for a while. For a while, when they came to work in this country, most of them. So, the question of uh, return, right of return, uh, which uh, comes uh, to the picture uh, every time and again, uh, is very questionable. And uh, according to the world cr criteria of refugees, they have no right to return, uh, just like other refugees in the world, which, are, which have the right to return within 10 years. After 10 years, they are not viewed by the world as refugees, and their problem should be solved in other places. This is how the UNHCR, UN High Commissioner for Refugees, works everywhere else in the world. Only here, when it comes to the Palestine and the Israelis, there is one agency which works only, or operates with them, and perpetuates their status as refugees forever uh, to their descendants and in no limit of, uh, of time. Very strange, very uh, odd situation. And uh, many understand today that the problem between Israel and Palestinians will never be uh, solved as long as this agency operates because it perpetuates the problem rather than solving it. This is, I would say in a nutshell, the historic way how to look at the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. The other side of the equation is the religious way. Most, sir. Yes, questions. Yes, you, you know. Okay. Um, you mentioned uh, it sounds uh, by your description that most uh, Palestinians or people consider themselves Palestinians here um, were coming from our neighbors. Yes. About 100 years ago, more or less. But uh, there are some natives 
uh, some some natives uh, that lived in yes, an acre in Jerusalem. Yes. Can you put numbers behind that? What, what portion did come like that and what portion? What Nobody really knows the numbers because this region was never an isolated region to be counted in, in separate from other places in the world or in the Middle East. Look, first uh, census which was taken in the Middle East was in the 30s. The first one in Lebanon. Until then people were not counted. People didn't count people because uh, they didn't think it's important. Look, the notions of democracy which uh, uh, enhances the number of people who, how many support this side, how many support this side, are new to this, to this region. This is why the number of people here never made any difference, especially when Bedouins, and this is the, this is the basis of the culture of the Middle East, are, they are wandering from place to place according to the grass which they can find for the, for the sheep and, wa and water and seasons of the of the year. So, uh, look, I'll, I'll give you another good example. Uh, thanks. Uh, there was a shuttle, a train, between Haifa and Beirut. A train which a few times a day went the day. People could live in Beirut and walk in Haifa and vice versa. Could live in Haifa and walk in Beirut. Imagine that one day there is a war and the, and the shuttle uh, stops running and the tunnel in Rosh Hanikra is being blocked and some people are stuck where they were working and not at home. So what are they? They are Palestinians or Lebanese? Okay, it was the same thing, the same area. People could go from, from Haifa to Damascus every day with a train just like people go between Haifa and Tel Aviv. So it was not different country to be counted uh, separately. So nobody really knows. There are all kinds of estimations. The estimation is that half of the population left in the 1948, around 600,000 left in 1948. Uh, most of them are newcomers, uh, which claim the right to return to this space. By the way, the resolution one, 194 which mentions the right of return, not as an obligation, but as an, as an option, uh, states that only those who were here at least two years, means they left, no, they came here no later than mid-May 1946, they were here at least two years, only they have the right to return. Those who were here less than two years do not have the right of return. Within two years, you become a nation? Okay, so there are all kinds of strange things about this. Who, somebody who was here for two and a half years is a Palestinian? Okay, th these are the questions, sir. Again, you said that the Palestinians were not mentioned in any book until the 18th, uh, 20th century. Yeah. Uh, not even I, a newspaper. Yeah, if, if you ask uh, you know, the average uh, man on the street, he would say, yeah, of course, the, the Plishtim are the Palestinians. How well, every, every bit of information, or almost, which we know about those, are from the Bible. And the Bible mentions that they came from the, uh, the Aegean Sea, between Turkey and Greece. While Arabs, as we all know, uh, came from the Arab Peninsula in the 7th century. So how can you bridge between these two facts? Uh, they call themselves Palestinian because this country was, was named Philistine, or Philistine by the Romans in order to denigrate the Jews who were here and so the Romans called it Philistine. Actually Adrianus, case, uh, the Caesar Adrian, Adrian, he was the one who uh, named this country Philistine. And uh, we carry this thing until today. There are Arabs who came from the Arab countries, from the Arab Peninsula in, nine, in the 627 and 8, occupied this country with the second caliph, Umar al-Khattab, and settled here. 
like many other uh, nations before them, who came here, like the Byzantines and the Persians and others, who occupied this country, settled here, until they were kicked out by those who came later. So this is not the same people? They speak Arabic. The religion is based in the Arab Peninsula. So, and, and they have nothing in common with their culture with the Aegean uh, uh, Sea. So the name is only because they came to this country, which was named Philistine by the Romans. This is the only, the only connection between them and Philistine. Yes, sir. Um, two questions. One, when can you put the dot, the change of perspective about the refugee and the creation of the, uh, the Palestinian nation? You're speaking about a lot of... Uh, well, it's a process. It was always a, it was a process. So when do you put it? Because a lot of scholars now in the West not uh, have different opinion and research uh, to what you just said. You see, the nation started in the 19th century. Even you got Kimmerling who said it the beginning on the beginning of the 19th century. So the research is quite different. So where is the, if we want to base our knowledge on facts, and I know that a lot of the things are true. I read a lot of uh, places and uh, Flas name and places uh, even like Dovrat and Dvoa uh, in the north and like mentioned in the Bible. So. What changed the perspective about this? I would, I would go to a library and look for books who mention uh, people. Look, <laughs> you can create retrospective, you can create whatever you like. Go to libraries, look for ancient books who were printed, which were printed in the 19th century and find the first time when something is mentioned. You can assume that this is more or less the beginning or a bit after the beginning. If you find a book before 1920, which was printed before 1920, mentions the Palestinian people, I would accept it. So far, no one uh, uh, found. Uh, you know what? Newspaper, notebook, newspaper, which mention, mentions Palestinian people before 1920. I, will, I would change my, uh, my mind about this. Yet, uh, nothing was found before then. By the way, Jordanian people are the same. And Syrian people are the same. And Lebanese people are the same. Because all these are new creations after the First World War. So. I have a question about the refugees. And about, first, about UNRWA. What is their response for the different policy? And they have different charter. How can it be they are the only one, the only organization that don't allow the refugees to integrate inside the society? What is the response? This is the situation. They don't have to respond. To respond. Somebody is a student in Bar Ilan, somebody is a student in the Hebrew so on. But in the UN, there is two, uh, two bodies that deal with Definitely, the Definitely, yeah. One is for the whole of the world, yeah. and one is only for the Palestinians. Isn't that right? Weird? Politics. Because the Arab world pressed to have different charter. The, oh, the oil, the Arab oil also helped this uh, process. Uh, the, 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 UNA, the United Nations is a very politicized uh, organization. Yeah, they they never respond about it. They don't have to. Thank goodness they don't have to. Uh, uh, UNRWA takes care of them and that's it. And by the way, the American taxpayer pays for this and the others to perpetuate the problem rather than solving it. And another issue about the right of return, you said about, about the... Uh, in order to find a solution, we have to deal with the issues of refugees in, in Lebanon, in Syria, in, in Jordan, but what about the right of return of Jews that was divorced from their houses in Iraq, and in Syria, and in Jordan, and in Cairo? We also You're right. Have, we also have rights there, as they claim to be part of Jaffa or in Tel Aviv. Some of the Jews here in Israel say, can say, yes, I also have property in Cairo and in Jordan also. Well, uh, I saw once a research which was made about the assets which uh, Jews left in those countries. Turns that uh, the, what the Jews left in the Arab world worth way much more than what Arabs left here. So definitely, uh, you, you, you have a claim to get either compensations or I don't know what. But there is a difference. The world did never heard about Jewish refugees. The world keeps hearing about Palestinian refugees. I would even say, um, we Jews 
did not profess being refugees. We didn't make it into a profession. We solved the problem. We absorbed, better or less. But Israel, um, since the 60s, doesn't know any more about what we call Ma'abarot, all those uh, temporary uh, uh, neighborhoods which were built for refugees. And everyone became an Israeli. And we became Israelis. And I would even say that the biggest success of Zionism is not to bring the Jews out of exile or to take Jews out of exile. The biggest success of Zionism is to take the exile out of the Jews. It means to create an Israeli nation with a new mentality of a free, self-confident people here in this country while leaving the exile behind their backs with the assets. So now, since we created the new mindset of an Israeli uh, who is free from exile, it is hard for us to start convincing now the world, hey guys, we left in exile some assets. Because we detached ourselves from our past in exile. We did it willingly. We did it because we looked forward, we didn't look backward. So now coming and claiming, hey guys, we, need, we, we want to have some billions from Morocco, from Iraq, or from other places, the world will look at this as something suspicious, because the world never heard about this. While the Palestinians did not stop crying about what they left after they were living here for three years only. Okay? So this is the difference. They made their refugeehood into a profession. We did not. Sir. With turning refugeehood into a profession, the Palestinians are the only nation, or one of the only nations in the Arab world, who have not had uprisings. We look at the map, and look at every country surrounding Israel. Every well, during the last year. During the last year, during the last two years, three years. And, and if you look back in history... Well, they had the Intifada against us twice. If we, but I'll get to the point. If we look back 50 years, there were uprisings in Egypt. There were a couple in, like, in, in the surrounding countries. It's not something that's new to the Arab 